and welcome to Saturday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where we're going to be trying this extraordinary looking puzzle uh, called Violet Owl by Tyrganus. Now, Tyrganus, I've done quite a few Tyrganus puzzles over the last few weeks, but they've all been puzzles, not Sudokus, but this most certainly looks like a Sudoku to me. Um, and I think we're going to have to call this video Hedwig Sudoku, or I don't know, are there any other famous owls from literature? The only other one that comes to mind is what, from one of my favourite song stroke poems, Artful Owl. I'm sure many of you remember Artful Owl from Captain Beaky. Now I'm going to try and remember the words to Captain Beaky. Uh, uh, Captain Beaky and his band of... Uh, oh no, no, no. I, now I can't remember it. Oh, and this is going to really bug me. I'm almost going to have to stop the video now. I can't bear it when I can't remember um, either lyrics or, um, or, or lines of poetry. Oh no, march the woodland singing songs that tell how they have righted wrongs. Oh, once hissing Sid and evil snake kept the woodland folk awake in fear and trembling every night in case he gave someone a bite. Hmm, it went on like that, didn't it? And there was a wonderful line about Artful Owl in it, which was something like, um, Batty Bat. Above them flew old Batty Bat with his wings spread out quite flat. Al's idea, the clever fella, to have a flying umbrella. <laughs> and you may wonder what on earth I'm talking about. For some of you, I'm sure that brings back very cool memories. Well, cool? No, not very cool memories, but memories nonetheless of Keith Michelle on Top of the Pops and something I've probably watched about a hundred times. But I realise at this moment that I am not entertaining you. I am. Um, I need to talk about Sudoku. Do I have anything to tell you about before I kick off with Tyrganus's puzzle? The answer is not really. If you're a patron of the channel, I would appeal to you to have a go at the quite approachable Sudoku hunts because a thousand of your fellow patrons have had a go and have finished it correctly, which is quite remarkable. And all the comments seem to be really good about it. So it's very, it is really approachable this month. And lots of people have been able to work out the final code word and send it to us. We've had virtually no incorrect entries, so definitely have a go. And you've got a few more days to get the answer to us to be in with a chance of winning a prize. Um, now, nothing else to tell you, So, uh, and I'll stop reciting poetry now or trying to sing, and we will have a go at Violet Owl. And the rules are as follows. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Digits along lines separated by grey circles must have values, oh, in between Values in between, oh, these are in between lines. I should have picked up on this. Uh, values in between those in the circles. So we've got in between lines today. Now it's ages since I've looked at in between lines and I have no idea um, whether I had a sort of stock description of the rules. But basically what this means is let's make that a two and that, we'll make that a seven. So you can see that these lines, these the, the cells on the line now, the digits we put on this line have to lie between the two and the seven. So they would have to be three, four, five, and six, and the three would have to go there. In fact, this could be four, five, six in any order. So basically that's how between lines work. Um, just make sure whatever you put on the lines is between whatever you've put in the circles. Um, digits along a purple line must form a set of non-repeating consecutive digits in any order. So we've also got Renban lines going on. So these three cells here, well, something you can see immediately is you couldn't put a one in any of these cells, because if you did, you'd have to put, in order to make the cells consecutive, they'd have to be one, two, and three, and the three would clash. So we need to put something different. Let's say four, five, six, and seven. That would be a completely legitimate way. At least I think it would be of filling in that Renban line. So all that said and done, do have a go at the puzzle. The way to play is to click the link under the video. My glasses are adjusted um, and I shall have a go. Let's get cracking. And I love the fact my owl, or Tyrannus's owl, I suppose, has got a beak. That feels very appropriate. And to start the puzzle, we will observe that there is an awful lot of symmetry. Hang on. Hmm, actually there is a lot of symmetry. If, by, by symmetry, I mean, if I was to imagine a line dividing, or a line where my, where my mouse is moving there, so sort of in the middle of column five, and you were sort of to flip the grid around that, that axis of symmetry, Almost everything would map to itself. Oh, there's a little line here. 
Okay, so this Renban and this Renban are slightly asymmetrical. And the threes, well, this three is not symmetrical. But that's it. So, so what that implies to me is that whenever we do find any logic in the puzzle, we should definitely be trying to... So if we find some logic in column six, we should be trying to apply that logic in column four. If we try and find some logic in column nine, we should be trying to apply the logic in column one, because we might hit lucky uh, if we do that. Now, the, the longest Remban line is a five cell Remban line. So the first thing we can do is to write a five onto it. And that's because if you think about it, if we were to set out the digits one to nine in order, uh, and then we were going to try and slice a group of five consecutive digits from, from that set of digits. You can see, we'd, however we did it, whether we started with one, uh, we'd get to five, it would be one, two, three, four, and five, or we started with nine, and we went backwards, we'd always pick up the five. So we're always going to pick up a five on this line. And that tells us that that cell is not a five, <laughs> because this cell sees every cell on the Renban. Knowing that this is not a five is, I suspect, not um, hmm, not Harry Potter worthy, is it? So, where do we start this? Is it the between line? What do we know about between lines? We know they don't have ones and nines on the lines. Um, and the reason for that should be fairly obvious. If you try and put a one on the line, you've got to put a zero in one of the, in one of the circles. And that, at least not in this puzzle, that won't work. Um, right, okay, there's something. Yes, actually, this is interesting. So where do one and nine go in row one? Well, they can't go on the line and they can't both go on the same Renban because if you try and put one and nine on this Renban, you're going to have a big problem with this digit, which is not even a Schrodinger cell. It has to be a two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight simultaneously, and that won't work. So that means that there is a one, two, three on one side of this of row one and a seven eight nine on the other side of row one. Now the challenge is to know which side is which. And no, before you were to ask me to, what I'm not going to do is that. Oops, or even that. No, 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 we're not doing that. Um, oh what I will do, what I will do is I will do that. That seems a fair compromise. Um, Okay, so this is four, five, and six. One of these is one, two, three. One of them is seven, eight, nine. So perhaps we're meant to color those in, are we? I don't have anything better than that. I'm going to color them. I'll make that one yellow and that one green. So one of these, a yellow strip, is either a one, two, three, or a seven, eight, nine, and a green strip is the opposite. Yeah, OK, so that means I can colour that cell and this cell in because I've got four, five, six here. So these cells have to bound four, five and six somehow. But this one can't be yellow, so it must be green and that one must be yellow of some sort. And now I've got a heterochromatic owl. <laughs> that's a word I only know from crosswords, but I think it means something that's got different coloured eyes. Um, now, okay, this is a very magical owl now. Um, hmm. It's a timid toad, I like your plan. Good luck, said owl, for you're the man. <laughs> so, timid toad, his eyes are popping into the... So timid toad, his eyes are popping into the woodland night went hopping or something. <laughs> um, now, oh dear, come on. What does this mean? So does that mean this has to be green? That's probably what it means. So if this is yellow, which is one of those, which we don't know what it is, then I might have to put some numbers in here, sorry, because this is quite hard to visualize in, in abstract. Let's just have a think about this. I'm fully prepared to remove this one, two, three and put it over here, but I just want to think about the nature of this digit. So if this digit was a very low yellow, it would be a one. Two, three, four, five. Ah, now six annoyingly is not a green digit. Two, three, four, five. 
So that's very annoying. I was going to say that I thought this would have to be green. And by analogy, by similar logic, that would have to be... Oh, or well, does that break the Remban? Uh, almost. If that's a six... I can't put six on the Remban. The Remban has to be one, two, three, four, five. One would have to go explicitly here. This would have to be... I think I'd have too many middle digits in this box. I think, I think I'd have to put two, three, four, and five into those squares and two, three, four, and five into those squares and that won't work. Ah. Ah, no, hang on. Hang on a minute, that doesn't... Yeah, I, this, I don't think this works anyway, actually. Because... Am I not going to get into trouble here with having to put too many greens into this box? So what I'm wondering, I'm still desperately trying to make this green. If this is not green, it would have to be one of those digits, which I haven't coloured in. Let's just colour those in as well. Let's make those blue. So this would have to be a blue digit. And the only blue digit it could be to stop this being green is a six. And this would work um, sort of uh, the other way round. If this was seven, eight, nine, and this was nine, and we were trying to prevent this from being a yellow digit, then this would be a nine and a four. So if the... They have to be exactly five apart in, in order for us to not have a problem. And then these digits would have to be very explicitly two, three, four, and five. But now, now I've got all sorts of problems. I'd have to put a six here in this column because I've not put one in. But now I've got to put one in this column and one will have to go on this line. And that will mean this will be a one, two, three and all of these cells will be completely broken because I'll have, I'll have to select these digits will be one, two, three, four, and five for seven different cells. That would be a six and then seven. I could put one high digit in the column, but only one high digit in the column. So that doesn't work regardless of the Renban. I didn't use the Renban to do that, did I? No, I didn't. So that is good, I think, because that means I can do the same thing so this square has to be green, that's what we've proved. And I think by analogy, this square has to be yellow. And we will just we will just prove that to ourselves. In fact, we'll do it the other way around. So if this was nine, and I wanted this not to be yellow, so let's make it four. These have to be absolutely forced, five, six, seven, and eight. Which forces four here. And the nine has to come onto the Remban down here, which has to be nine, eight, seven, and I have a problem. So Houston, we'd have problems, and that sort of problem is actually a good problem. So this is yellow, this is green. But as I was doing that, I was worrying about something. Now, what was the thing I was worrying about? Yeah, okay. So, well, this this is, I mean, if this was a one and a nine, this would be incredibly powerful because now you'd have to put a nine on there and that would have to be nine, eight, seven. And then these two squares would have to be blue, but I don't think we do know that these are a one, nine pair, at least not yet. Um, oh, okay, my beak is interesting now. <laughs> <laughs> the beak of the owl is interesting because if we think about the digits we've got to place in box two, they're one, two, three, seven, eight, and nine, but three of them are on a Remban. So these, the beaky digits, are either Captain Beaky digits, are either seven, eight, nine, or they're one, two, three. And again, I don't have a very good way of pencil marking that. Maybe I'll make them simultaneously yellow and green to try and remind myself that these have to be from the same set, 
even if I don't know what that set is yet. Um, okay. That, uh, oh, the other thing I've got to be careful about, I was about to eliminate a three from this square, which would have been completely invalid because this is not necessarily one, two, three, and this is not necessarily seven, eight, nine. So I must, Simon, concentrate. Um, so hmm, what do we do next? We could ask ourselves... It's probably going to be about ones and nines because one, ones and nines are the restricted digits by the between lines. Oh, yes, yes, okay. That is a good thought. So, where do I put? Yeah, this is a good thought. Um, I put one, two, three in here. Remember, this could be seven, eight, nine. But the key point I want to ask the question about is where does the low digit or where does the extreme digit go in column two? Now, you can't put the extreme digit on this Remban. So you cut i.e. the extreme yellow on this, this Remban, because then this will be three yellows and this cell will have no fill. So the yellow is not the extreme yellow is not there. It can never go on the between line by definition. So it's in one of those two squares and it can't go there because it definitely sees itself in that box. So it got, it's got to go there. That's an extreme digit. And the same logic is, uh, yes, the same logic by symmetry applies here. So maybe now we should get rid of the, maybe now it's worth getting rid of the, the sort of placeholder numbers because these two squares have to be extreme digits. Now, what does that mean? So that's an extreme digit. So now, <laughs> um, hmm. Oh, yeah, okay. So now, yes, okay, this isn't, this isn't too difficult. Where, where does this digit go in this box? The answer is not there and it can't go on its own between line. So it's in one of those three squares. So this green is in one of those three squares, which means by Sudoku, it's in one of these three squares, but it is green. So the, and we know the greens in box three are one of those three squares. So it's that digit. So that digit is a one or a nine. Now that's not greatly surprising actually, because obviously the further apart you put these greens and yellows, the less you're restricting the lines. So what we'd actually have liked to have seen here would have been a middly digit, but we didn't get one. So now there's, Oh yeah, so now now you can't put you can't remember this is an extreme digit. Well, it can't go on here now because the moment it's on the ren band, that would create another string of green ren bands which would look at this square and break it. So that square's got to be the green extreme. And I'm really hoping that this is going to work when we look at it from this direction as well. So let's ask the question: If this is yellow, will it? No, that is yellow. If well, where does yellow go in box four? Not in those six cells. So one of these three, which means yellow's in one of these three, and it needs to be in a possible yellow square. So yes, it works identically. And now we can't put yellow here because we'll make a yellow stripe. We mustn't make yellow stripes, especially not on our owl. So that becomes a one nine pair as well. And we can say at this point, this is rather fascinating. Um, and I know it's fascinating because when I look at the clock and it's not just been me talking about poetry, it's 20 minutes and I feel like I've just literally just turned the video on. Um, so now what on earth do we do next? Can we, I can see I've got a one nine pair in row six. I don't think that's helpful. So 
So, is there a problem? Because I was thinking, if green, if the green one nine has to go in one of those three squares rather than on this ren ban, then it would be forced. It can't be ever be on a between line. It would be forced here and make a green stripe. But actually, a green stripe there looks sort of sensible, doesn't it? Oh, there's got to be a green right. There's got to, this green can't go there in box four. Can't go there on its own between line, and is not yellow by definition. So there is a green on this line. One of those two is green. I'll give that a grey flash to try and remember. It's one of these two, which means this line has got a green on it. Yeah, this is <laughs> this is not useful. Um, I suppose I should do the same on this side though. So there's got to be a yellow in one of those two by exactly the same logic. So is it the ren band now? No, uh, so I know that whatever green is. If green was 9, then 9 is off the ren ban, which forces 4 onto the ren ban. But I don't know whether it's 4 or 6 that comes onto the ren ban. I mean, I know there's a 5 on it for sure, but because I'm taking an extreme digit from one end, I'm going to force another digit onto it. And we're sort of getting closer towards the 3s, which must be relevant for some reason. Um, well, what else can we do here? We've got to stop. I can't put... Oh. Hmm, that's an interesting thought. Let me just think about that thought for a moment. Yeah, the thought I'm having is... Now I've got a 1, 9 here. I can't put... If this was a 9, I now can't put 8 on this Remban. I used to be able to put 8 on this Remban. But now there's a 9 here. If I put 8 on this Remban, this Remban would have this 7 on it as well. And there would be 3 greens looking at that cell. So I've got a problem there. Oh, hang on, now I've, now I've broken the puzzle, haven't I? Oh, no, I, I can put it there. Oh, I see. No, I haven't broken the puzzle. Right, sorry, I thought, I made, I thought I'd made a terminal error. But I think we can, we can actually use this. So let's think about where the digit that's next, that's not, not the 1 or the 9, but either the 2 or the 8 go in this column. Because we can't put it on the bottom rem band for the reasons I just mentioned. It can't go here. It can't go on this rem band because that rem band has a yellow on it. And there's no way of connecting a yellow and a green along a, sorry, a, yeah, a yellow and a green on a three cell rem band because you've got the, all of the blues that would need to be between them and they can't be. So that means that the extreme, the next extreme digit, the two or the eight in this column is either here, which it can't be, because we know it's a green, it's green, so it's in one of those cells, or it's here. So that is two or eight, which means that is three or seven. Ah, ah, now does, if that logic works the same way there, that can't be three. That would be beautiful, good grief. Yeah, it does, it's the same. That's so clever, good grief. It's not easy though. So now the same question. Where does, it's not the 1 or the 9, it's the 2 or the 8 we have to think about on this Remban. It can't go on there, it can't go there because that's got a green on it, so it has to be here. And if that's 2 or 8, that's 3 or 7, and that disambiguates the line. There's a 3 here, so this is 7. Therefore, this is the high numbers, so 7, 8, 9. And this is the low numbers, 3, 1, 2, 1, 1, 9, 9. Um, okay, so that's a 1, 2, or 3 now, and that's a 7, 8, or a 9 now. Uh, 
Okay. <laughs> uh, this actually, this one and nine here are absolutely useless for this Renban. The fact that one can't go on this Renban forces six onto this Renban. I think. Um, two, three, four, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it's got to have a six on it now. And goodness me, it's still very far from clear to me what we do with this new information. Oh, I can do something with one in the middle box. Maybe that's what we've got to do. Because one can't go on that Remban, or it would be a one, two, three Remban and cl clash with this Remban. So one must be in one of those cells, which means that one, oh, this is, yeah, this is good. So one has to not be on the between line. One goes on that Renban, which makes this a one, two, th oh, which makes this a one, two, three triple. That's a three at the top and a two here. Oh, this is lovely, actually, because now look what this does. Now the two we can look at back on the middle box, which can't go in here either. If we put the two in there, you've definitely got to put the three on the rem band. So that's got a two on it. But not only that, it can't have a one on it. So that's a two, three, four triple. And that's not a three. Um, uh, I don't know what that's doing, but that felt like a breakthrough. So, hmm, hmm, <laughs> we shall, so, okay, so we've used up one, two, three, and four in this box. So this Remban is from five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So it does have a seven on it. Um, okay, great. And then we shall look for what exactly that gets, Oh, all of these greened, I suppose. We can get rid of the grey flash. So that square's blue because it sees uh, it sees three yellows and three greens. So that's a four, five, or a six. Hmm, okay. Is that helpful? I'm sure it is somehow. I just don't know how. Three in box two two ah yes that's helpful three in box two is on the line which means that this line is a one two three triple aha so that line is a seven eight nine triple that means it turns green these have to turn yellow oh no hang on i've got that the wrong way around <laughs> no i've got that totally the wrong way around i was looking at thinking why have i got greens and yellows with the same numbers in them so that's better. So now I've got a one, two, three triple in this row. That square's now got to be blue because it sees, um, this square sees three yellows and three greens. Um, now, what does that mean? I've got two. Uh, so one of these has got to be high and one of them has got to be blue. So one of these has got to be blue Oh, ah, but I can't put one on the, yeah, in this box, where does one go? Can't go on the between line, so it's in one of those two squares. That meets up with a one here, so there's a one on this Remban, which is a one, two, three, triple now. Which means by Sudoku, this square is a two. These squares are a one, three pair. They turn green. There's a one, two pair and a one, two pair, so these two squares are now a one, two pair, which means that they are both green this square here is now blue we can get rid of the corner pencil marks pencil mark those as four five six um ah now look also there's a seven on this renban and there's no eight or nine so we know what's on this renban that's five six seven that square's a four i'm not sure i'm not saying anything I'm not i'm not going to act in any way confidently but but you know what I'm thinking. Five or six here. This squares down here have got to be uh, eight, no, ooh, four and eight, I think maybe. Four and eight and one, oh, these two are on little rem bands. So that one must be four, five, six or seven. Ah, you rotten thing. Bobbins, that's no use, I don't think. 
This one has got to be three. That one's even, so this has got to be odd. Three, seven, or nine, or five. It's not three. So five, seven, or nine. No, okay, sorry, that's that's not where we should have been looking, I think. That's not done anything. Um, okay. So that was almost exciting, and then it's we sort of let ourselves down, didn't we? Uh, <laughs> as a result of that. Um, and we've got to think again. So where should we think now? Three... Yes, I see. Yeah, the, the sensible question is to do the same logic that we sort of did over this side. So what I'm what I'm thinking about is I can't connect this Remban line to green digits. So this three has to go in one of those cells, which means actually I can place it. It's got to be here. But more importantly, it comes down to this Remban where it can't where one and two aren't on the Remban. So that becomes three, four, five. These squares have now got to be six, seven, eight, nine. Mr. Goodliff would be proud of me for the way I pencil mark that. This Remban must have the two central digits from six, seven, eight, and nine on it, because however we're selecting three digits from a sequence of four, you're always going to pick up the middle two. So that's never seven or eight anymore. Still don't know whether this is green or yellow though. Sorry, not green or yellow, blue or yellow. Um, what about the three, four, five down here? Does that mean we should be asking about? And why haven't I used this Remban yet? <laughs> that Remban has proved very naughty. Oh, ah, oh, for goodness sake. Right, okay. But what we can say about this Remban now is it can't have a three on it. There's a three here and a three here. So if there's no three on that Remban, there's no two on that Remban. And there's no one on that Remban. So that Remban is made up of the digits 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Now that can't be 9. That can't be 4. Oh, that can't be 4, I just noticed, because I've got this 2, 3, 4, triple. Oh, that can't be 9. Right, let's actually do Sudoku. That's going to be sensible. Come on. How is Sudoku? That can't be 7. What about this one then? Oh dear, I think that's got lots of options. Oh. Oh dear, that's really tricky. Um. Okay. <laughs> so, what does that mean? Okay, we must have to do more Sudoku then somehow. Four in this box is up here one of those two positions. If I could lock the four onto the Renban, that would be very useful. How do I do that? Or if I could get this digit. Because, well, if that digit is on the Renban, it has to go here. There's got to be a yellow digit on here, look, as well. Is that somehow important? So, this digit is definitely in one of those two positions and is definitely on this Renban. I don't think that's a problem, actually. It probably is, but I can't think of why. That square's not a three. So now oh, I've now got a one, two pair in row three of the grid, which is nearly interesting. I should highlight my threes. They're, they're sticking out as being naughty because they're not green yet. And okay. And now <laughs> what should we do next? Is it, I'm not sure. I, I feel it's either column eight or it's the Renban, or it's the between line. I don't think it's this between line. This between line looks to me to have let itself down, frankly. Or 
it's Sudoku. Actually, it's probably Sudoku knowing me, isn't it? Yes, look, I can put a two into that box. Uh, just by Sudoku. Oh, good grief, man. Um, oh, it is. Oh, this is right. This is gorgeous. This is gorgeous. Right. So this two, three, four is really important because it gives me the two here. Now, what else does it do in this box? It puts four onto my Renban. So my Renban is now not got nine on it. So it's four, five, six, seven, and eight. And that is very important because, I don't know, <laughs> it, must, it must be important somehow. So I know there's a four in one of those two cells, so there's no fours in those squares. Uh, I have difficulty believing that this doesn't. So now there's a two in one of those squares. Can we rule two out of this little Remban? If this is a two, this has to be one or three. It can't be three. No, we can't. Oh, okay. You rotten thing. Okay, so what is it we're missing here? What is it we're missing? Is there something we can do with two, three? Yeah, well, there's a. Now this can't be a four. We can place four into this square, but that doesn't, I think, take us forward very far. So that's, that's now definitely blue. Golly, this is quite tricky, isn't it? It is quite tricky to see how to finish this. I think probably we're just going to have to plug away with old Sudoku and see what we can conjure up. This row, so this square here is a five, six, seven, or eight. Um, now, oh, I see. Now I see the point. The point is much simpler than I was making it. The point is that once nine is not on this Renban, and once nine doesn't go there, because it's a between line, nine falls on this ren band, which makes this ren band into seven, eight, nine, of course. Now that ren band is becoming all yellow. We get a six at the top of the grid. That gives us a six and a five over this side. I knew I shouldn't have even given the slightest hint that this was going well. Um, and now I've got a four and a six, so that's a blue. This square now must be the last blue in that box and therefore we actually know the digit that goes into this square which is five we can remove five from the rest of the ren ban um, now what else can we do presumably something else <laughs> i don't know what that that something else is but we can certainly do it five in this box has to go here by sudoku so that gets blued Can we do something with our sevens, eights, and nines somehow? That seems seems likely we should be able to. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. This Remban now at the bottom has got a six on it, and that means it's six, seven, eight, which means that square at the top must now be nine, which removes nine from those cells. That's on the between line. So that's seven or an eight does nothing. Look, so we've got two, three, four, and five fixed on the between line already. This nine comes out of this square. So it's nine in one of those two squares. The six, seven, and eight means those two squares are two and nine. Seven, eight here means that this, there's definitely a six in one of those squares. So there's no six in that square. So this is down to seven or eight. Right, let's look at the options for this. It's one or oh, it's one or eight only because the nine can only be consecutive with eight. Sort of feels like that should resolve something, doesn't it? At least that's what it feels like to me. Um, three has to come out of this square. Five, six, seven. I still can't see how to resolve this row. Um, okay, 
Right, settle down, Simon, and do some more Sudoku. Right, this has got a 7 on it, so that's not 7. And now we know this doesn't have a 9 on it, because if it did, this square would be broken. So therefore, there must also be a 6 on this Remban, which means we can take 6 out of here. The only place for 9 in the row is now there. This becomes a 7 or an 8. Um... And whatever it is, I think, is the same as that one. If this was... Oh, yeah, look. If this was 8, 7, 6, both of those squares would now have to be a 4. Yeah, or simpler than that. Where does the 5 go in the middle row? Or, sorry, in row 4. It has to be on the line. So this line is 5, 6, 7. Those two squares become a 4, 8 pair. And these squares become 1s, 8s, and 9s. And that means we get a 7 here at last. 7, 8, 7, 8. 8 comes out of this square. 8 comes out of this square. 8 comes out of this square. 7 here is now useful. Last 4, 8, 7 go into the grid. That becomes a 4. 5 becomes here, so that's 5 and 6. I think that might have been available for a while. I have that sense that I um, that I could have got that earlier. <laughs> the moment I saw this 5 and I was like, mm, there's a 5-6 pair here. That doesn't look good. Okay, so all of those squares turn blue. These squares turn yellow. And hopefully something is going to resolve this middle bit of the grid. It's probably going to have to be digits like this, isn't it? So the 7 and the 9 are done. That's not 9 anymore. Uh, 7 can come out of all sorts of squares in row number 7. Four, five, There's a 4, 5, 6 triple, so 8 seems to only be able to be here. And... Ah, now I've got a 1-8 pair in this column. So 1 comes out of there. Still still doesn't seem to be quite done. Oh, but 6 is here. Right, that's going to be important because that means this is 5. And that means that's 4 and this is 6. And we're slowly but surely closing in on something useful. Aha! Now that's only 7 or 9 now, so this must not be 4 anymore. So that's 8, that's 4. Oh, come on. No! How can you get a 4, 8 there and it not do anything? That's absolutely barbarically horrible of you. Um, okay, alright, alright, we'll, we'll go slowly again. Um... <laughs> this is right. Uh, but, 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 but. Okay, four. No, eight. It really isn't. Okay, so eight is in one of those two. Oh, maybe it. Maybe I've literally got to search for five, three, seven. No. Oh, this eight. Of course, that's what's doing it. It's actually, if I scan to the top of the grid, I will get somewhere. So that's 8, that's 9, that's 2. Now 9... Oh, this could... Oh, this 7. Good grief. I have literally lost the plot, haven't I? Tyrganis, you have made me lose the plot. Well done. I apologise to you all for this execrable display of Sudoku towards the end of this puzzle. But I still think I might solve it eventually. Um, I'm going to colour some things in now so they can become yellow. I'm going to make this square a blue. I'm going to make these squares all yellow as well. This square, this square and this square all get blued. That square gets greened. And I just, I'm just lost as to why I can't resolve this bottom row. I really... It feels like it must be resolved and I can't see why. Um, anyway, all right, so this is, this eight is giving me an eight and a one in the center, which I can color in and I'm going to do that because why wouldn't I? Three, what 
is it that's resolving all this? Okay, these squares have got to be one, two, four, and six. And I just don't think that I've missed something here. I've missed something really terrible. It just it it shouldn't be at this point of the puzzle. It shouldn't be this difficult to solve it. It, it feels like it's done, and I'm just not seeing something in front of a lot of people. Oh, this is horrific. Uh, the four comes out of there. So this gets reduced to one or six. It's not to do with, I've filled in the Ren bands. I've not filled in these digits. That's what, that's what the problem is. If I filled in those digits and their colors, everything would become simpler. One, two, there's definitely a three in one of those. There's a one in one of those. I can't see it. I'm so sorry. So, seven here. Maybe it's that seven and... Ah, oh, there you go. Okay, it's that, hopefully. Because that does give me this digit and this digit and this digit. Okay. So now maybe I'll believe that we are actually getting somewhere. That's not six. I've got a one, two, three triple in this column. I've got a yellow here and I've got a blue here. And I need this not to be one anymore or six. So this is two, four. It's a two, three, four triple. A one, two, four, six triple or quadruple, I should say. That's still, oh, and I see. And now one's on the between line here. So that's the point, isn't it? So that has to be a two, that's a four, and that's a six, and that's a one. And finally, Simon, good grief, that's appalling. Four, I'm so sorry, Tiganus. I feel awful about that because that was, I could sense the puzzle was not, you know, it didn't have any tricks up its sleeve anymore, but I couldn't for the life of me see how to just resolve it in any sort of efficient way. That was so bad, it makes me feel awful. Anyway, there we go, I think we have now once I do those final two pieces of colour, oh, and finish the puzzle as well. We have now finished it, I think. Yay! Yay! It took me 47 minutes, and about 27 of those minutes was on the last 12 squares. <laughs> that was so awful. Um, I'm cringing inside. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed laughing at me for that. Um, I wasn't trying to do it deliberately, I just couldn't see what to do. And um, I'll blame the colours. I mean, I was getting very colour blind. I mean, if I wasn't colour blind, it would all have been fine. And I wouldn't have needed Captain Beaky to rescue me. And I'm off to listen to Top of the Pops and Keith Michelle. I recommend it to you. If I remember, I'll put the link under the video. Um, certainly, certainly worth five minutes of your time. And we'll, and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.